Lamar Jackson wins yet another award, but is everything copacetic at one winning drive? Man, it was all good just a week ago. Man, how they switch up on you so fast. And the Baltimore Ravens go into uncharted territory. All this and more coming up in this video next. But first, Ravens fly. Let's fly. As the week winds down and the Baltimore Ravens prepare to take on the Denver Broncos, Lamar Jackson has won yet another award this season. And this award is the AFC Player of the Month. For the month of October, Lamar Jackson has 1,241 passing yards, 12 touchdowns, a 67.2 completion percentage, 193 yards rushing and an average QB rating of 126.5. So that means for the month of October, Lamar Jackson is averaging 300 yards passing and three touchdowns per game. He's also won AFC Player of the Week, like Lamar Jackson is setting himself up for a very successful season. And right now we're not gonna get into that narrative that Lamar can't pass and he's not a quarterback, he's not quarterback enough. What we're going to do is concentrate on everything going forward. And one thing that may be sort of an issue with all of the amazing stats and all of the things that Lamar has done this season, how Lamar has showed out and has played above anything that he has done in the past. When things start to go well, there's always something that tends to go wrong. Now, it may not be a big deal. It may really actually be nothing. But of course, your head coach, John Harbaugh, has lied to you once again. I said in the live stream on Sunday that just because you are required to let the NFL know if someone is injured, to put them on the injury report, it does not always happen. And we were told yesterday that Lamar Jackson was just getting a rest day with some bumps and bruises. They were just letting him heal up from just everything that he's done for the season. But for the second day in a row, Lamar Jackson has missed practice, citing knee and back pains. Everyone thought it was Lamar Jackson's annual missed practice because of the bubble guts or whatever, the padoodles, whatever they thought may be wrong with him, but he actually has some things going on. And it could be due to the hits that he's taken from this uneventful offensive line. Luckily, the Ravens have gone out and got Derrick Henry to take away most of the curries to lessen the punishment that Lamar Jackson has been taking. But yet and still, here we are, back knee pains. Hopefully, he will be ready for the Denver Broncos on Sunday. Now, some people may think that Lamar should rest because three days later, the Ravens take on the Cincinnati Bengals at the bank, which your man's going to be at thanks to my baby girl, Jazz, who got me tickets for Father's Day. So is it if Lamar's bang up, do we rest him on Sunday and take that chance to put Josh Johnson in, hoping, praying that this man can actually get us a win? Or do we have Lamar thug it out and hope that he doesn't get injured? Now, the Denver Broncos with rookie quarterback Bo Nix may not strike fear into opponents, but the Denver Broncos have a very good defense. They're allowing the lowest amount of yards per play in the NFL. The defense is pretty tough and we don't need anyone overtaking this offensive line and hurting Lamar even further. So if this team is coached up the way that it should be, the way that y'all tell me John Harbaugh does it, if Lamar were to set out this game, this should technically be an easy win for him. Just sprinkle in a dose of Derrick Henry and hopefully this defense can find its footing and we come out with a win. Lamar plays Thursday and we go on from there, but that may not be the case. So hopefully this is nothing serious. And speaking of nothing serious, I try. I try my best. Sit there and I'll tolerate Emmanuel Acho. I'll tolerate him because I know a lot of times he says a lot of things that he says just due to wanting to get ratings. He knows that Lamar Jackson is a big ticket item. So talking about him is going to get you the views. It's going to get you the ratings. But for me, it's the flip flop and it's the one day this, the next day that. And yesterday on his show, the guys were talking about Lamar Jackson being out of excuses. I could have swore they've done that topic at least three or four different times. But with the Ravens trading for Deontay Johnson, they're saying that Lamar is out of excuses, being that he has won two MVPs and possibly on his way to winning a third. He has no more excuses for the playoffs and not getting to a Super Bowl. Is Lamar Jackson officially out of excuses? I think he's been out of excuses. If you watch the way he's playing, the way he's talking, he's all about a championship. He don't want no excuses. Yeah. Lamar last year had a number one defense. Yeah. His excuses were done then. Mm -hmm. Lamar ran out of excuses last year when he had an elite defense. Yeah, I'm going to say it. He has been out of excuses. But he's but Lamar Jackson's been out of excuses, though. I mean, we can't sit up here. You had the number one offense 2019. You had two top five offenses the last two years. 
with a top defense, defense right. and you did not get it done. So the excuses for Lamar Jackson has, has been gone a long, long time ago. It's about winning the championship. But the issue that I'm coming up with is why can't we let things be as they are? Let's keep it to what Lamar is doing right now. Last week, you talked about how he elevated his play, how he deserves to be in another league because it's just not fair to what he's doing to everybody else. But then once the Baltimore Ravens lose one game, it's about his playoff record. It's about his playoff success. Stop moving the goalposts. Stop switching the narratives just for the ratings. If you rock one boy, cool. If you don't rock with him, kick rocks. But as of today, we should be talking about right now and everything going forward. What has Lamar done in the 2024 season? Let's not talk about what happened last year in the AFC Championship game. And it's amazing how a lot of the guys on the show with him just tend to follow suit. Talking about, yeah, Lamar's out of excuses. You know, he hasn't done this and he couldn't do that. He needs to do this to show what? He is one of the greatest players in NFL history already into his seventh year. Let's just marvel at him for what he's doing now and stop waiting for something to go wrong for you to turn on him and bring up old narratives. And I think you guys have gotten past the fact of he can't pass and he's not throwing outside the numbers and he's not doing this and he's not making his teammates better. We've gotten past that because he's shown you this season he's doing all of these things exceptionally well and better than your favorite quarterbacks, even with the wide receivers that he has. And now segmenting on from the wide receivers that he has into the wide receiver that he just got, the Baltimore Ravens have moved into uncharted territory. Now, when I read this article today, I had to sit back and be like, hmm, it's very interesting. I'm not surprised, but it's interesting nonetheless, because I've done a lot of videos. I've done a lot of research on the history of the Baltimore Ravens as far as statistics go. And when it comes to franchise leaders and the wide receivers and skill positions that we've had, those numbers don't stack up to a lot of organizations. And I mean, not for the entirety of each franchise, just for those years in general. There are some records that we have that individual players have passed in their first four or five seasons. And we've been in existence for 20 something years. But this to me just shows you the importance that the Baltimore Ravens put into the wide receiver position, which may be changing as of right now. It surprised me to find out that during the Baltimore Ravens history, there have been six separate occasions where the Baltimore Ravens had a wide receiver go over 100 yards in consecutive games. On six separate occasions, they've only had three games in a row where the wide receivers have caught 100 and something yards worth of passes, three times. And as of the Cleveland Browns game this season, they just broke that record with four. I know, you're thinking, eh, what does it mean? It means that it took us all of these years to just get four consecutive games and it doesn't mean that it has to be by the exact same player it just means a wide receiver on the team had a hundred yards and only four consecutive games once again there are players that do this for eight nine consecutive games alone and combined as a team we only have four but I think things are starting to get better I think that the Ravens may be putting a little more emphasis into the wide receiver position knowing that listen we got to do something with this pass game because this defense is really not working out. And on the subject of the defense, the Baltimore Ravens are struggling mightily. And no one seems to know what the fix is. People are saying we need to trade for a defender by the deadline. Some say we need to fire the defensive coordinator. I could not tell you what the fix is because I think it's going to be a combination of a lot of different things. I don't think one player or one departure is going to help. But one thing that may move the needle a little bit is for the Ravens to actually go out there and maybe pursue somebody else as the defensive coordinator. And I'm not saying that I want Zach or to get fired because I don't want to see any man lose his job. I don't want to see any man or woman without their money. But when we're talking about Super Bowls and we're talking about the Super Bowl window, we right now are in our Super Bowl window. We're in Lamar Jackson's prime. We need to take advantage of every opportunity that we had. We need to take advantage of Derrick Henry running the air out of the ball. We need to take advantage of Lamar elevating his game each and every year. So to me, I think that maybe a demotion could come into play and the Baltimore Ravens need to reach out to Robert Sala and say, listen, I understand you up there with your homeboy in Green Bay, but come be the defensive coordinator for us, help mold this defense, help get these linebackers in check. And then in the interim, come win yourself a Super Bowl. 
I think the fact that he could become a defensive coordinator again, and maybe if he is successful with it, it can lead to another head coaching job and you get to win a ring. So I think these things would be enticing for him to come in, but for him to leave Green Bay and his best friend, the best man at his wedding, for him to do these things would be extremely hard. And something needs to be done for the Baltimore Ravens to get this defense back to a championship level because we are entering week nine. And we keep saying, oh, it's only week, it's only week, it's only week. We're gonna end up being in the playoffs and still have the last ranked passing game in the league. And this is not going to fly. Yes, the offense is highly rated. And we saw Sunday, if all things do not fall into place, we could lose a game to an inferior opponent. So we need to do something to get this defense up and ready. And after Sunday's game versus the Denver Broncos is the trade deadline, Monday at 4 p.m. So who should the Ravens trade for? Should they get a defensive lineman? The team just put Michael Pierce on injured reserve. Should we get another linebacker? Should we get a cornerback and a safety? Should we get a combination of players? What do you guys think is gonna help fix this team going forward? What one player could the Ravens bring in? I know there's been talk of Buda Baker. There's been talk of Tyron Matthew. There's been talk of Jadavion Clowney actually coming back to the team. Some guys say we should bring back Zadarius Smith. What do you think is actually going to help this defense manifest this old self or half of what it used to be so that these teams and these quarterbacks can stop having career games against our team? If you tend to figure it out, please, please let me know. But I guess until then, we will remain deficient on the side that we pour the most money into. They just put out an article about Namde Matabike and him being frustrated and him being double teamed so much, he wasn't expecting it. Bruh, you led all defensive tackles in the league in sacks last year. You're a hundred million dollar man. What did you expect? You thought it was gonna be like last year and they were gonna underestimate you and just let you roam free? We need more out of him. We need more out of our $100 million linebacker in Roquan Smith. We need more out of that $70 million safety in Marcus Williams. Hell, I'll take you suiting up and actually just playing and earning your paycheck. But you and Harbaugh got some things to hash out and that is a conversation for another day. So until then, something needs to change. Nah, man, I'm cool.